I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection. I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection. I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in His suffering become like Him in His death. And so how to attain the resurrection from the dead. Thank you, Lord. God, I'm good. Good you didn't see me. What am I gonna do, Lord? Jesus. Lord, oh, heaven. But I haven't even eaten. I'm so hungry, God. Lord, you said you would provide all my needs. I don't know how long I'm gonna last like this. Should I just go ahead and just take it? I just don't feel right. I just don't feel right. I don't feel right. God, Lord Jesus. I need you. I need you, Lord. Why are you forsaking me, God? about him. He know what to do. I, I, 
still got time. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Peter answered him, We have left everything to follow you. What then will be there of a, for us? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. At the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who will follow me will sit on the twelfth throne, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left the houses, or brothers, or sisters, or fathers, or mothers, or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and many who are last will be first. Hmm. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. They had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. He exercised all the authority of the first beast of his behalf and made the earth inhabitants worship the first beast. Most fatal wounds had been healed, and he performed great miraculous signs, causing even fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of men. Because of the signs he was given power to do on behalf of the first beast, and has deceived the inhabitants of the earth. He ordered them to set up an image in his honor, the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. He was given the power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that he could speak because all who refused to worship the image to be killed. He also forced everyone, small and great, rich, poor, free, and slave to receive a mark on the right hand and on their foreheads so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark which is the name of the beast or the number of the name. This calls wisdom. If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast for its number, of ma it's a man's number. His number is 666. I'm here at the house.
Lord, you know all things before we even ask it. Right now, you know what's about to come, oh God, and I don't even know what to do right now. And I'm trusting and believing in you. I don't know who to go to and who to talk to, Lord. I gotta go, they're forcing, I'm not forcing us to go and, and, and receive receive this oh God and, and I can't buy or sell unless I receive the mark and Lord I don't even know because people are actually now there's a reward out for anyone who doesn't receive the mark and so if I say to anybody or anything about me not taking it and me trying to take off and I don't know where to go. I don't know who to talk to. Cause not someone is my my even my own best friend can turn me in. All the people they care about is money. And right now the cash is useless. I can't buy anything without. I can't use cash unless I receive that on my skin. What do I do? Lord, what do I do? I'm afraid. I don't even know if anybody just reported me in yet. There's a reward out. Lord, show me. Give me a sign of something, Lord. I need to know. What do I do? I ain't got no money. Because they, they don't take cash. I can't buy. I can't sell anything because I can't get any credits for it. God, you have to be more clear with me. I need to hear your voice, Lord. What do I do? Manuel Gonzalez. Manuel Gonzalez. God, I serve a glorious God, Lord God, hate the glory is thine, I serve a glorious God, the glory divine, you know the glory divine, I serve a glorious God, I serve a glorious God, these is like evil times that we living in now, I serve a glorious God, so things that can happen to me, that happen to them, I still know there is glory in God, I don't worry cause the Lord can provide, you see, I got Jesus Christ on my side. 
I got the sword and the shield is inside. I got the Lord God and He is divine. No matter situation that could come my way, I know there's a way. Walking with the Lord, He's the W A Y. For all things that could come, I say, Lord God, help me and pull me high. I the stuff I was about to die. Trust in Your word, trust in Your ways. You are the light, You are the safe haven that I need. I trust that You got, and I'm freed. Every shack where that was on me, I tried to pull it, but I couldn't be freed. I serve a glorious God. Serve a glorious God, and the glory is thine. Man, the glory of God so high, so high, and the glory of God so high. The glory of God so high, so high, and the glory of God so high. The glory of God so high, so high, and the glory of God so high. The reason why I can even live, and I can even die. Sir, I, I know you don't know me, sir, but uh, I see that you got the good word there and I didn't know who I can trust hello my brother how you is know, how is things going not so good they're they're after me and you already know that it's mandatory to take that you look troubled my brother but let not your heart be troubled you came to the right place at the right time you will have no harm done to you here. This is the sanctuary. The cross is our guide. Jesus is our God. You have no fear here. go I just saw this I saw the cross I saw the sign I mean but what if they come here I mean what do we do if they show up you I mean they have a list of people's names and the cross will get us where we need to be I read a story about a young man and his mother and the young man went to a store with his mother and the boy got lost in the store and the mother was upset. The store had closed, no one can find the little boy. And the mother went to the police and said, my son is missing. Listen, young man, my son, his son was missing. The police went to the store and found the little boy asleep in the toy section. When they woke the little boy up, the woman had went home. The mother was home. And when they woke the boy up, they said, where do you live? He said, I don't know. He asked him his name. He said, my name is John. He said, well, can you describe where you live, the area? He said, well, where I live at, there is a house that has a steeple that has a cross. If you take me to the cross, I can make it home. You've come to the cross, my brother. You're home. It's going to be okay. Emmanuel Gonzalez, your soul is required over her. God, it was a dream. Thank you, Lord. Oh, 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 my God. Oh, oh, 
Oh, yeah. Ooh, I'm home. <sighs> Back to reality. Literally opening doors with automation that's turning sun workers into high-tech machines of sorts. This is a lot more than just some sort of novelty to you. It is. It's reality. With all of the interest we've seen in it, I can tell this is definitely the future. By injecting a rice-sized microchip into a willing employee's hand, all kinds of data can be programmed into them, from driver's licenses and medical ID cards to logging onto computers. You have to hold it up to something such as this. Even purchasing snacks in the company break room. More than 50 employees have volunteered. How much does that hurt? Didn't really hurt a lot. A third holding off for now. That kind of freaks me out a little bit. Some experts suggest caution. Among the concerns, ID theft, health, and whether the chips can be tracked by GPS. Most people don't really understand how this technology works, what data is collected, how it's stored, or who might be able to get access to it legally or illegally. Three Square says their employees cannot be tracked by satellite. Melissa Timmons was skeptical, but is now chipped. Yeah, right now it's only buy a candy bar and get in our building, but there's a lot more that's going to be, be coming with it. Chips off the new block. I'll choose to pay with my hand here. Cool and technology once again hand in hand. Ramad, NBC News, River Falls, Wisconsin. There you have it. I had to turn my mic on, guys. There you have it. That is a film. It's reality. As you saw the guy on the news clip say, he said, you know, this is more than just fiction. It's reality. That's why it's called It's Reality, okay? A short film that we made probably eight years, a while ago, eight years ago. Maybe it was, we should made that film a while ago. But um, it really, we need to make another one, a, a real powerful one. Back then we had... The equipment that we had was just like we had small cameras. We did not have a lot. OK, we did not have a lot back then. And uh, we made that we when we, we made that film. OK, we made it. Originally as a test. OK, we, we well, I should say when we first set out to do it, it was supposed to be a test for it for an actual big film. OK, but as we were making, I said, you know what? <laughs> I told Pedro when the game, I said, look, y'all, I said, look. Well, you might as well finish this thing up. You know, you might as well make this a real film. We can add different things here. And, and I want you to understand that that movie is anointed. Amen. I'm going to get a movie. I'm going to get a movie. Here. Where, where are my applause? I'm going to get the, the movie and, uh, applause. Okay, right, right quick, y'all. For real. Tell you, 
That movie is touching. I I watched the entire thing in a minute. Um, and it's, it's just it's touching. It's really is touching. Um, you know, God is so good. Keep our brother Haji in prayer. That's the brother that you saw that was playing the um the census worker. Okay, with the with the uh, tan coat on. All right. <laughs> He's a fellow Christian rapper, also a good brother, good guy. And um, he's just, he's not home right now. He had um, some strokes, okay? So just keep him in prayer. He'll be able to, that he'll be able to be he completely healed and returned, okay? He's been gone for a few years because of, um, you know, those strokes. But we pray even that Lord touch your high you rock right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Heal him, Lord. I pray even as I'm praying, Lord, and as, as people watch this, that these, this prayer will multiply even more, that you would just touch him and raise him up, Lord God, and put him back home. We know, Lord, that you said it. We, we know if we heard the stories, they're supposed to come home not too long from now. We pray, do it, Lord. We know you can do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, y'all. So, um, yeah, that movie is touching. We think about the time that we're living as we saw the other day. The video about the um, guy who received a neural link. I may actually pull something up about that. Let me see if I can find something. Give me a quick moment here, y'all. If you're watching live, let me know in the comments. Or if you saw, watch, just watch the film with us. Let us know in the comments. Even if you're, even if you watch it in post, if you're watching it after this live is done, let us know how you feel about this film, okay? Because this is not just any film. It's a film, okay? That I, me and some other people came up with, okay, some years ago, and we're gonna uh, do more. If you want, uh, if you yourself are a writer, all right. And want to help with a, a future project, make sure to email me. Hold up, let me go before I pull this thing up. Make sure to email me. Let me pull the email up right quick. Make sure to email me right here. Brother Winston at gmail.com. Okay. That's brother Winston at gmail.com. Make sure to email me right here. Okay, here, okay. If you want to collab or something, all right. We are right now in the Philadelphia uh tri-state area, Philadelphia, Delaware, Jersey. Okay. Uh, so yeah, let us know. Uh, let me pull up here some stuff about this Neuralink here. Let's see what's going on with this. Let's see here. Okay. Try to see go. Okay, I'm going to this official Neuralink page here. Okay. Okay, that video actually was from Neuralink. I didn't realize when we played the other day, the brother actually was right from Neuralink. Let me see um, the Neuralink page, I should say. Let's go on their page and see. Hmm. I'm trying to see what videos they have here. Some of them are kind of short. No, actually, I have a lot. They only have 13 videos on here. That's surprising. They have a launch event. Let me. Hmm. Let's see something here, y'all. Let me see. I'm gonna type in. And I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually go to their page, and then I'm gonna go to live online to see what people are saying. Okay. The page just doesn't have a lot of information on it, to tell you the truth be told. So I can tell them about to go somewhere else. Let's see here. Hmm. Okay, I, I see what's going on here. Let me turn this down. There's an ad play here, y'all. Okay, I'm going to pull this up in one quick moment. Let me take this email down. Just add the complete air. Okay, here we go. All right, turn the music down. We're gonna play these two videos real quick. All right, let me click on this. Get my camera a little smaller. These are the times that we're living in. It's important that we understand these things. It's, under, it's important that we understand what is to come. And that we try to, to, to see what's happening. Amen. We get complaining to God and say, well, Lord, we didn't know it's such a surprise. What's happening? God will be like, well, you got the opportunity to know. 
it was right in front of you. It, it is your job to look and to find these things. Amen. So now let's pull this up here. This is from Neuralink's page. Uh, it says Neuralink clinical trial, the prime study. This is from four months ago. Hello. We're thrilled to introduce Neuralink's prime study, the first clinical trial of a groundbreaking experimental device that could help transform the lives of people with paralysis. Imagine the joy of connecting with your loved ones, browsing the web, or even playing games using only your thoughts. This is made possible by placing a small, cosmetically invisible... Let's look at what he just said one more time, okay? Because this is not RoboCop, all right, or, um, you know, Iron Man or some futuristic... Some, it's not some futuristic world. It's our world, which is the futuristic world that we're living in right now. First clinical trial of a groundbreaking experimental device that could help transform the lives of people with paralysis. Imagine the joy of connecting with your loved ones, browsing the web, or even playing games using only your thoughts. This is made possible by placing a small, cosmetically invisible implant in a part of your brain that plans movements. The device is designed... Now look at that device. I want to say this, all right? I mean, I mean a lot to you guys. You've never done any of these before, but I'll say this. One of the things that I know how to do, okay, is I know how to fix computers to a certain degree. I can even build a computer, all right? I've messed with many, you know, computer components, seeing components in devices that look very similar to that, okay? Um, the fact that they can create a component. <gasps> Excuse me, y'all. The fact that they can create a component. It's only eight something. I'm, wow, I'm all yawning. <laughs> the fact that they can create a component like this and just easily just connect it to your brain, that should be a sign to you. I'm telling you that they have technology that's far beyond what we understand and that they know more about people than we really understand or know. Um, there are, you know, a variety of projects that have gone on years ago. You may have seen some of those videos or movies or documentaries, maybe on Netflix or wherever about, um, um, you know, the man, different projects like the Manhattan project, the different things that people have done. There was one project that they had where they were putting people on, um, that the government had where they were putting, um, they were testing site. Uh, what do you call it? Um, sir, I can't remember the name of this drug, but they're, they're just different types of drugs. Okay. Um, on people, I believe like in the sixties. Okay. And they were testing the, for, for example, they would test them on prostitutes. Okay. Or there's different guys. Okay. Uh, where they would have prostitutes lured to certain guys in certain areas. And they would basically drug them in it. See how these, how they can affect what they do by these certain drugs. Okay. Um, some of those drugs actually hit the market after that. And the, and the U S was basically responsible for these drugs that are being released, but they never told people that. Okay, and they, it was found out many years later that they, that they were the ones that released some of a lot of these um these drugs. Okay, they put you in a in a different state of mind for sure. All right, um, but we see now they're coming out and telling you, look, we get places in your head, and the things that we say that we that, that uh, can be done can be done. And if you and if you saw the video the video the other day, like the live I did, if you haven't seen that live the live I did, check it out. Okay, it's a few videos um below um on on our YouTube page this one or maybe i think it's two days ago or so and you will see or just go to the um the um neuralink youtube page they show the full video also you can see them simply saying that there's a guy who was um he he was in a swimming accident he was he died i think he dove in the water and he it somehow damaged his um spine and he had no feeling for he has no feeling from the neck down they gave him the Neuralink. He was one of the first human trials, or not the first one. He said, I'll take it. They put the Neuralink in the top of his head, skull, dug into his skull, put it into his brain, closed the area up. It has to be charged, they say, at, at, at certain times. And the guy was showing how he was able to play chess. Now, he can't move his arms or his legs or nothing. Only, he can only move his face. And the guy was able to, for example, there's a part in the video where the, the, the guy next to him, said um can you turn that music down because they had music playing in the background this guy looked at the screen and you saw the cursor move to the right of the screen and he turned the volume down i never saw anyone do that before with their mind okay they're able to tap into the minds i said i believe that the government has the ability to read your actual thoughts 
all right, by hacking into the frequency of your thoughts, the same frequency that allows your body to move in, in its different motions. Okay, so frequency that can be hacked into. All right, so look at what they're saying here, y'all. Mind to interpret your neural activity so you can operate a computer or a smartphone by simply thinking about moving. No wires or physical movement are required. By participating in the PRIME study, you'd be helping to redefine the boundaries of human capability. If you've been living with quadriplegia from a spinal cord... Now I wonder if when they say, or if, by participating in a PRIME study, does that mean they, they want you to get an implant? Sounds like it. ...injury or with ALS, you may qualify for the PRIME study. I think they are talking about that. We'd love... To that's, why, that's why they want you to be a quadriplegia, okay? Makes sense too because well, one they're gonna say that the reason why I want you to be like that is because they want um to show show how you can't do this motion and now you can with your mind. I think also it's because if it fails and you die or something were to happen, they could say, well, it's not necessarily us that caused that, but you know, who knows? You know. To share more with you and get you on board, visit our website today to learn more and to submit your application. We'll be supporting you with a dedicated team at every step on this revolutionary journey. Your courage and contribution could significantly shape the future of interaction and independence, not just for you, but for countless others. That's true. It could shape a lot of things for, for, for countless others. Now let's look at this other video, okay. Oh, is this the same one? Hold on. Oh, I see. I pulled up. Okay, this is something different. Okay, I thought I had pulled something else up. All right, let's look at this. It can turn human. Neuralink is a brain implant that can turn human beings into cyborgs, reverse physical disabilities, cure diseases, and save the planet from evil AI superintelligence. But how does it work? While a lot of science involved is literally brain surgery, I promise you that it isn't as difficult to understand as you might think. We are about to show you the inner workings of the brain computer interface device known as Neuralink. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is create a physical interface between your brain and the computer. That means we need to access your brain, and that means we cut a nice round hole into your skull. Not too big, just about the size of a watch face, that's all. Now, this is the outer layer of your brain, the cerebral cortex. This is where all of your high-level calculations take place. Different segments of the cortex control different aspects of your mind and body. Towards the front is where your mood and emotions are processed. Towards the back is where all of your sensory inputs get received, like touch and vision. Right in the middle is the motor cortex. This is the sweet spot that Neuralink wants to access, and it's because this particular section of the brain matter is responsible for turning thought into action. The idea here is that we can hardwire the motor cortex directly into a computer. Now you are controlling that computer entirely with your mind instead of a mouse and a keyboard. For a person who- And that's powerful. I like how the guy just described it. Because what he's saying is that you're now connected wirelessly, truly wirelessly, okay? to a computer so they're merging man a computer which is literally term the story of terminator and all that kind of stuff okay the merging of man and computer as a it's a, literally a real thing all right the fact and, and i say this in a of caution because like i said i think yesterday uh or day before yesterday i think it was day before yesterday on our, on our other video about um this stuff what can go wrong, okay, I think we got a call coming here. What can go wrong will go wrong when it comes to the world, okay? Let's see who's calling. Hello? Hey, Sister Luella, what's going on? I just wanted to let you know everything went well. It was beautiful. Well, the funeral? And I just, huh? The funeral, right? Yeah, I couldn't find you. I can't get you on. Oh, oh, oh. 
don't want you yelling at me. I can't get you on my phone. <laughs> okay. And I'm really tired, but I just wanted to let you know. Thank you for everything, for prayer and everything. And, um, well, where is that? Oh, I'm so tired that I'm getting ready to pass out. Hey, man, we'll get some sleep. You only had two hours sleep, and I had to get up at mm. six to cook, and I had two hours to cook. Okay. I just, yeah, I did it through Christ. Uh, we, we made it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> See, now it's time to have that rest of the Sabbath, rest of God. Amen. It's time to get that rest on. I'm you so know. tired. I can't even put my pajamas on. Don't talk to me. Go, go lay down. Lay down. You know, I don't want you to be, be up. I'm trying to get you, but I can't find you, so I'll keep trying. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, thank you. All right, God bless. God have a blessed night. Bye -bye. God bless you. Let me pray to touch our sister. This is um, um, Luella. I was about to say Sue Ellen. Thinking it's Dallas, y'all. Um, <laughs> y'all know that show. Um, but we pray to touch our sister Luella right now. Um, bless her for always calling in, Lord God, when she can supporting this ministry in jesus name we thank you for all you're doing god in the precious name of jesus christ amen yeah so as we were saying y'all i'm gonna give her a hand all right as i was saying i don't i'm not saying this or talking about this adventure by elon these these adventures um pushed forth by elon musk to attack elon musk okay but i'm saying that this technology can most definitely be used for wickedness all right and I believe that in a, in a very near, near future, it will be used for wickedness. All right. One reason also, because we're, we, we are in a generation right now where there are a ton of people that will do anything to be entertained just a little bit more. Okay. A ton of people. All right. If you were to tell kids today, let's drill a hole. And that's actually what they're doing with Neuralink. Actually, I'll just say Neuralink. I'm about to say drill a, head, drill a hole in the, in the front of your forehead. But that's actually what Neuralink is saying. You're going to tell kids, look, let's drill a hole in the top of your head, which is what Neuralink does. All right. It's crazy. I, I was trying to get something crazy. And it's actually, I really can't. Okay. <laughs> let's drill a hole in your head and put a chip in it. And this chip will allow you to go on TikTok, go on, um, you know, the different apps you want to go on, you know, without having to use your phone. You no longer have to use your phone to use these apps. You can literally just think. And the app will pop up. All right, we'll give you a, we'll give you a, 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 um, you'll be able to subscribe on your chip. This is what I think. This is what I think is going to happen. Actually, all, all jokes aside, you'll be able to subscribe to a um, cell phone carrier, okay, an internet carrier, but you won't actually get a phone. You'll just be subscribed to it, and it will connect you to your Neuralink. All right, and from there, you'll be able to. Do everything you could do on a phone without having a phone. You'll be able to pull up any app. You'll be able to look, scroll, swipe through this and that with lightning speed at the speed of thought. Okay. We, we, we'll even put something in there to make your thoughts accelerate. <laughs> so you can even think faster. All right. With this new stuff, you could just sit back, close your eyes, or maybe you can see them with your eyes open and, sit and watch the panel just roll by or scroll by as you just swipe down, swipe up and down, swipe up and down. Which is what Tony Stark and Iron Man did. The guy who played Iron Man, who was the guy who was who was Iron Man. Okay, okay. Um, the guy who actually played it was Robert Downey Jr. Jr. the actor, but <laughs> uh, Iron Man or Tony Stark is his civilian name. All right. Oftentimes you would see him going like this, and you could see what he was seeing, which was a bunch of panels, a computer, you know, panels that he could see in front of him to some kind of program he had. Though in the movie it was like a hologram; it wasn't necessarily in his mind. Um, but I think it may be, a, it may have been a part of the movie where he was talking about putting something in your mind. I can't remember all the movies because he had, there, there are a bunch of Avengers movies and Marvel films where he was talking about different tech that he was coming up with. But it, I believe, he, you know, think about those films, those, movies, those films, those Marvel films and the Avengers, they were many times billion dollar films. You know, like one film made a billion dollars. Even some of their, their, their bad films made a billion dollars. Okay. And, and their franchise of 20 plus movies made billions of excuse me not millions of dollars billions of dollars all right billions of dollars from those movies because a lot of people billions of people went and saw saw those movies okay tons of people saw those films okay um and because of that 
you know, that thought to do those different things, that technology is now becoming very enticing to the youth. I'm not saying nothing against the films that they're showing that stuff, showing new technology. I mean, any science fiction film will or would, would be expected to do it. But when you think about how these things are being shown and you think about how, like I said, a lot of people today will do anything. I mean, I'm, I, I'm not trying to make fun of this guy when I say this, but for example, there's this rapper named Lil Uzi Vert. Okay. This guy, Lil Uzi Vert, a few years ago, got a, a, a diamond, which they say was worth over a million dollars. I think it was worth for four million, if I'm not mistaken. It was worth a lot of money. This diamond was put into the center of his forehead. He had it literally um, somehow molded into his forehead. And he was walking around with this diamond in his forehead, okay? I was saying to myself, if you go somewhere where people want to get that diamond, which could be a lot of places, someone could beat you up, rip that diamond out your forehead, and make a ton of money, all right? Why would you want to walk around with that? You know what I mean? That's like walking around, but well, it's just not a good idea in my opinion. He eventually got it removed, all right? But a lot of youth were like, wow, that's cool. And he knew that people would think it was cool, okay? They'll say, oh, it's a flex, He's, he's carrying more money than you'll ever see in your entire life many times over, you know, in his forehead as a decoration, you know. We're in a time where fad after fad comes, as I, as I was speaking about, um, I, I think I spoke about this more at, at our church, um, at our church services. I said one of our, at one of our services, um, how the, the enemy, um, I believe that a lot of these dances online are inspired by demons, okay? Every time you turn around, there's a new dance where people are they're doing, telling you to do this, this, and this, this, and it, and all these different type of dances. Remember the Macarena and all the different dances and all the different kind of things that people have. Um, I'm not saying that dance is evil. It's not. And there's praise dancing. Okay. And inherently, it's not inherently evil. People dance to the Lord. The Bible says David danced up on, on, before God. Okay. But when you're outside of God, you're not. And that's it's just like spirits, y'all. This is what I'm saying here, y'all. Seriously. Just like spirits, there are no neutral spirits. Okay, there's no such thing as a neutral spirit. They're either on God's side or or, or they're not on God's side. There's no, there's no such thing as a neutral person. You're either on God's side or you're on the devil's side. Simple as that. That's why Jesus in the Bible said, "He who's not for me is against me, and everyone that's not gathered with me scatters." Okay. So, as it pertains to these different dances and things like that, you may say, "Well, it's not necessarily demonic or satanic, but if it's not of God, where does it come from?" You understand what I'm saying? This is important because the youth right now, and many people, even older folks, they jump on everything that they're telling us to do. I saw some some post the other day. I don't know if you guys remember this, where I think it was around COVID time or something like that. They had this fad that came out of nowhere. I'm sure it was probably by some of it was created by demons. I'm sure to to just laugh at people. All right, seriously, they had this this thing called the crate challenge. I don't know if you guys remember that, where they had people crawling up crates. Okay, why well, my music down? I'm to turn it down. They had this thing where they um. They had people crawling up crates, right? And people were crawling up crates and basically falling down the crates, trying to pile as many crates as they could up as a challenge. And we're getting, in some cases, seriously hurt. And for what? Well, because it was a challenge online. If you put it up, you could get a lot of views. Someone could see you. All right. So, so. The age that we're in, we're in an age where a lot of people, a lot of, especially a lot of youth, the, which is to say the newer generations that that um, could possibly be in control of the world unless the Lord comes. OK, before then. They're being pushed into a society where where what's most important is you being seen. You got to be seen by any means. I want to be seen by any means. That's the motto. OK, any means necessary. All right. I mean, there are, there are guys who have videos on YouTube, for example, where they would go up to people and smack them or knock the food at their hand or do different things. There's one guy in Philadelphia, I think, isn't it? I think this guy, I'm not going to say the guy's name, but you may know what I'm talking about. This guy who did this before in Philadelphia, and he would go up to people. He was a big guy. He was an in-shape guy. And I think he went up to one guy, and he like tried to prank him. He tried to say, hey, he came up to him, and he was like, hey, bro. And he was, I think the guy was with his girl. I think he smacked the guy's drink out of his hand while he was with his girl, and the guy got started getting mad, and the guy was, I think the guy was around the same size. I think, like, the dude, he came up from behind the guy, and he just smacked his drink out of his hand, and he said something to him. So the guy started fighting him. I think he, he kind of got hurt, the guy who was doing the prank. And he tried to say, hey, it's a prank, it's a prank, it's a prank. The guy was like, listen, I don't care if you so you trying to call this a prank. All right? You came over here and started talking to him, smack it, smack the drink out of my hand. 
you know, and there, that's just a few things. There are people that have done pranks and got and lost their lives. Seriously. On YouTube and other social media websites because people are are literally dying to be seen, dying to be seen. So they can't, so if they push this stuff and say, "Hey, we are now opening up trials," as you saw in the video, not just to quadriplegics, but the folks everywhere, you know, everywhere. If you want to test this out, you want to be a part of it, just like the Tesla cars that people rush to buy. Um, which you've seen, I mean, you've seen that a lot of people rush to get the Tesla cars and new cyber truck. I'm not saying nothing against these. I'm just saying that people want to try out new technology. You think about Apple. Apple is always pushing out new phones. Most of the phones, in my opinion, are basically the same. All right. Let's hold on. They won't cord. It hit my leg. I thought myself, what the world is that? See, that's that Tesla technology. I started talking about, I started talking about the, um, <laughs> I started talking about the cyber truck. They tried to send a, 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 a cyber mosquito to Trump to bite my leg, y'all. Yeah, but that was that was the um the cord to, or or was it? Maybe they sent a cyber current into the cord to make it it touch my leg. I don't know the technology they got today, guys. I I can't even say. But um, but yeah. So you know, I think a lot of youth will be running after. The, I mean, just running after this stuff. All right. And I'm not saying this to be a um to be a dumb. I'm just saying that if I had to bet money, if someone said, "Hey, do you believe seriously?" If someone said, "Do you believe that?" They said, they said, look, we got, we got to bet. Um, Elon Musk will release in the year 2025, the, um, Neuralink to all ages. Do you believe that teenagers and the youth will run to this? If they give them a promise of some kind of free thing or whatever online, they'll be able to do all this kind of stuff with their phones in their mind. Do you think this will be big? Yes or no. If you say no, you'll lose a million dollars. I mean, and be indebted to a million dollars. Or if you say uh, basically, if you're right, you, you, you'll you win a million. And if you're wrong, you will lose a million, even if you don't have it, okay? You'll be in debt to us for a million dollars. I would say, yes, they will do that, okay? If I have it, a zero, of, of having no worry at all, I would have a zero percent worry factor on that, okay? Knowing that people will rush to that. They rush towards iPhones, the iPhones barely change. Right now, Samsung Galaxy phones, other phones are, and people don't like to hear this, but they're actually more, they're better overall than iPhones. They have now actual better, better cameras, better, they have, their cameras are actually higher grade than actual iPhones. Okay. They, if you look at the, the specs, all right, they, they, they're going ahead of them. All right. But still people rush when they come up, they say, Hey, new iPhone, people will wait outside for a week to get a piece of a technology, which is now becoming substandard to the other phones. All right, because the name, the name Apple, seeing Apple phone, it gives you the, the look of, oh, well, you know, I'm in the upper class. I'm not like those brokies over there. No, I'm in the upper class. We doing things big time over here. I, got, I know so many people, they don't have a lot of money and they and they got an iPhone. They have to have an iPhone. Why? Why do you need to have an iPhone? Well, oh, because the look, oh, it's a better phone. Actually, it's not a better phone. You know what I mean? But. Once again, the look, the look, the look, the look. I gotta be seen. I have to be seen. People who do it, and like I said, they're dying to be seen. All right. Now, if they, and it's, they can easily do this, drop the technology on their actual phones, so that all the technology and all the shows and streaming shows. Think about this: all the streaming shows are only can only be viewed through some type of mental implant. You know, how many people would get the implant? As many people as ran to get. The shots and everything else that they, they provided people, okay, in the past some years, those same amount of people and even more, I believe, we run to get these implants. They're going to be saying, is this safe? Has this been tested? Like they did it before. They, they're not going to say, is this safe or is this tested? They're going to run right to it. Run right to it. Hopefully, but I'm saying this, it won't make, it won't make this video disappear, okay, y'all? All right, but I'm just saying this is the truth, all right? This is the truth. And I say that because I have, every time I, I see my type talked about that stuff, all of a sudden, um, the government, which is watching over uh, these videos, if you, you say anything I want you to say, they will flag you and do all kinds of stuff, which lets, lets you know that um, this the bit that BB is real. I can't even say the name of that, or this video could be taken down. That BB is definitely real. All right, the Blues Brothers, the Blues Brothers. You know, what I'm talking about the, the Blues Brothers. You know, wink, wink. I can't I wish I could wink one eye, but I don't think I could do that. Um, I, I won't do that. But you know, wink, wink, wink. Basically, you know, I'm just gonna say it. wink, wink. You know, what I'm talking about Blues Brothers. You know. <laughs> They're definitely watching. All right, <laughs> let's continue to play this. Let me turn the music down. Also, I'm gonna shout out to um, Living in the Truth Ministries. Check them out. Living in the Truth Ministries. All right. Um, 
who has supported this channel, um, come on this channel before the living the truth ministries is the one that came on and talked about the astral projection that, that he did. All right. Um, he gave a, a, a good encouraging word before I came on live today. So I want to give him a hand. Thank you so much. Living in truth ministries for that encouraging word. All right, let's get back right back into this. Yo. Who physically cannot move their hands. This is a life changing enhancement, but even for a able bodied person, you would unlock a million times more bandwidth in the connection between your mind and the machine. Your thoughts instantly transformed into digital action. In mm. order to access those thoughts, though, we need to insert a wire into your brain. And this is not just any wire. Neuralink engineers have developed an ultra-flexible metal thread that is thinner than a human hair, yet is also able to carry 16 separate electrode connections into the mm. brain tissue. Each Neuralink N1 device has 64 threads that need to be inserted into the cortex, and the level of precision required is so high that no human surgeon could perform the operation. So instead, Neuralink uses a robot. The function of the R1 robot is remarkably similar to a sewing machine. The robotic arm has a tiny needle on the end that will very quickly stab into the brain material, deposit the thread, and then retract. The R1 has an advanced targeting system that helps it to avoid hitting any veins or blood vessels within the brain. The needle and the thread is only piercing the surface level of gray matter. What we're targeting with those threads are very specific cells inside the brain matter called neurons. There are 86 mm. billion neurons distributed throughout the entire mass of your brain, and 16 million of them are located in the outer cortex layer, and that makes them accessible to a Neuralink electrode. In the most basic sense, neurons are like little switches inside your brain, and they allow these electrochemical signals to travel all the way down from the cortex, through the intersections of the brain, and into the brain stem, where those signals get dispatched out through the nervous system to all the different parts of the body. So every action of the human body, from blinking your eyes to kicking a ball, begins with a particular sequence of neuron activations. By sticking our electrode thread right into the brain material where these neurons live, we can start to read the signals being broadcast by the neurons, kind of like eavesdropping on the brain's internal communications. Right now, we are only looking at them in a binary sense. The neuron is either active or not active, one or zero. And in this way, we can start viewing brain activity the same as computer code. In the instant that you perform an action, like clenching your fist, a group of neurons will switch from inactive to active, from zero to one. And as long as that pattern is repeated every time that you perform that action, then we can essentially decode the neural signal for clenching a fist. So that's great, but what do we do with it? Well, imagine you have a spinal cord injury just below your brainstem. Your neurons can still generate the signal for clenching a fist, but the physical connection to the arm has been broken, so the message isn't getting delivered. But if we can use the threads to read that signal directly from the cortex, then we can create an electronic bridge that bypasses the physical damage and delivers the message into the nervous system. Or, in an even more extreme example, you could send that neural signal out of the body and into something else, like a robotic arm, that would respond to brain activity in exactly the same way as your biological arm. This is all stuff that Elon Musk is talking about right now. This is what he expects the technology to accomplish within the next decade. But that still doesn't explain how this is going. You expect him to say 70, 80 years? Nope. He said within 10 years or less. Going to happen. Want to know the secret to becoming a successful YouTuber? I'm going to tell you right now. It's one very important ingredient. Caffeine. Actually pretty easy. Let's talk about where those wires lead. The N1 brain implant. This electronic device is only about the size of a quarter and the thickness of a wristwatch. Elon Musk often calls it a Fitbit in your skull, and he's pretty much bang on with that description. The electronics are encased in a soft, non-reactive silicone jacket, and the implant will sit on top of your brain, inside the hole that was cut into the skull. 
It's thin enough that the skin can be folded back over the hole and the device will be totally covered. No visible sign that you have a brain implant. Inside the N1 case is a small lithium ion battery cell, a wireless charging coil, a Bluetooth radio transmitter, and a silicon microchip with a very tiny computer printed onto it. Basically, the same stuff you'd find inside a Fitbit. And just like a Fitbit will measure your heart rate and convert that data into computer code, the Neuralink is measuring your neuron activity and converting it into a digital signal. The digital representation of brain activity is then broadcast wirelessly through the Bluetooth signal into a separate processing device like a laptop. And that's where Neuralink can start to convert the binary code into usable data. The best example of this was back in 2020 when Neuralink showed us this demo with N1 implanted pigs. The purpose of the demonstration was to show neuron activity associated with the pig's snout. So every time the pig touched something with her nose, the resulting neural spike would be picked up by the N1 implant and broadcast wirelessly to a nearby computer, which would then convert that activity into both audio and visual representations. And this all happened instantly. This is a, this is a high energy pig. Um. So every blip noise that you hear is a specific neuron firing inside the pig's brain and the different tones signify different neurons activating as the pig snuffles around in the hay and eats food. The next step up from here is to have the computer convert those bleeps and blips into software commands. This is mm -hmm. what we're seeing next with the Mind Pong Monkey demonstration. The first thing they do is teach a Neuralink implanted monkey to play a simple video game using a joystick. So as the monkey is manipulating the controller with his hand, the N1 is broadcasting all of the associated neural activity back to the processing computer. Once they have this data, Neuralink can use machine learning to identify the specific neuron firings that are associated with the physical movements of the joystick. Once they have this code figured out, Neuralink can bypass the joystick, taking neural signals from the N1 to the computer and then converting those into command instructions for the video game. And then finally, Neuralink can remove the joystick entirely because now all the monkey needs to do is think about moving the paddle on the screen to activate the specific neural pathway that the computer will interpret as a command to the video game. Now, all we have to do is take that very simple demonstration and scale up the complexity to the human level. There's really not a whole lot of difference between a monkey moving a pong paddle and a person moving a cursor on a computer screen. Whether you're using a mouse or a trackpad or one of those spinning ball things, your intention to move the cursor begins in your motor cortex as a series of neuron activations. Okay, we're going to stop right here for this video so we can see they're breaking down. Excuse me, they're breaking down how humans, okay, how we as people operate. Oops, I'm just saying how we operate and how we do the most basic things, okay? I'm sure it's more complicated in this way, but they make it seem to be so, so make it seem to be so simple. Excuse <laughs> me. But in actuality, if they can take thoughts and intentions and move them out, they can also bring thoughts and intentions in. Okay. They could punish you mentally if they want to. Seriously. They could, it, it, with stuff like this, you could actually say, look, um, if you commit a crime, we'll send a painful signal throughout your body just by, you know what I mean? Send, because you have the, the chip in your head that will keep you paralyzed for a matter of years. You don't need to have a prison. We can just paralyze you in your own home. You know what I mean? Seriously. It's a variety of evil things that can be done with this type of stuff. You would think, well, no one's going to do this. Someone already has. People already have. Okay. We've been, society has been brought to such a low place. People have been brought to such a low place. And you want to know why? I sound like brother. Um, <laughs> this, That's what's the name always says. <clears throat> Excuse me, brother Max. He always says, when he preaches a lot of times, he'll say, you want to know why? <laughs> I kind of play, I kind of make fun of that. Oh, you always say, you want to know why? But um, you want to know why? Um, I almost got my train of thought, hey, man. Why? Um, 
you know, people, why, why society has been brought so low, amen, and why I think people are going to, um, oh, I don't know if I see you, basically, why society has been brought so low, um, thank you, Lord, I almost forgot what I'm about to say, and, and, and the reason is, is because they left God, they left the Lord, left God, and um, they departed from the source of life, and when, and when you depart from the source of life, after a while, you start to feel like, you know what, I don't have any life. I don't know what people in the world are like. Look, we don't know what it is, but it's something missing. A person in the church wouldn't recognize it a little more if they're in the church and they actually knew God while they're in the church, which is what, you're, which is what you were supposed to do. They may think to themselves, you know, something is missing. That's why, and, it, and, it, and it's draining, to say the least. It really hurts. It can really hurt you. It can cause unbelievable depression, sadness, all kinds of stuff to be, to be missing God, to be away from God. All right. We were created to be with God, not away from God. Amen. We we're all created to be with the Lord. All right. And um, many people, too many, thousands, if not millions, actually live every day as if God does not exist, as if they're immortal, and as if God in heaven does not exist, as if God on earth does not exist, and if they're just immortal, or as if they're gods. All right. But this is the reason why you see all throughout society also. Outside of the devil trying to um, act as if he's God, um, pushing his own mess. This is one of the reasons why you see people, a lot of people today or celebrities during people today talking about God all the time when they themselves are completely godless. All right, and why they try to interject God and Jesus Christ into a lot of different things seemingly in a, in a favorable way when these, these things are not of God. Why? Because they know that people are starved for God, but they've been taught by their masters, all right, that you shall not go to the Lord. You shall not go to God. Wherever you go, don't go to God. Anywhere else. But don't go to that church. Don't go to Christ. Don't go to Jesus. That's the worst mistake you can make. Of course it is because the devil was defeated by Jesus. That's why. He wants you to go to everywhere else where there's no answers for you. Okay? So he continue to torment you. Continue to keep you tied up and bound till your dying day. And then on your dying day, you're, you'll open your eyes in the spiritual realm and realize you can still see you're still alive and you're actually more alive. Okay. As I've experienced you even, you're even more alive than you were in this body. Cause as I said, in my hell experiences, when you leave this body, your senses are increased by a great degree because your body hinders your, your, um, your computation skills when it comes to all that that you see. We can only see this way. We can't see from what's behind our head. We can only, if we want to see what's behind our head, we need to turn around. Okay, we can only sense or see so many things with these eyes. Also, we can only do so many things with the senses that we have. All right, but in the spirit, you're not bound to this body, so you can see all kind of things. For example, we see in the Bible there's a man, the story of the, the story of the rich man and Lazarus. The Bible says that there's a a great um, chasm fixed between Lazarus and um, and a rich man. But the rich man was able to see Lazarus, even though he was far away from him. The Bible says he was far away from him at a distance, but he was still able to see Lazarus. He was able to look at him from his across the chasm in hell, and he was able to recognize him. He didn't just see somebody on the other side, he could actually recognize him, and he could recognize Abraham. All right. He and he could hear him talking also. So you know it's a far distance, he could actually talk to them like nothing. Okay. Why? Well, because all of our senses are are um are increased. We can speak mind to mind. All that is, is a completely different story. If you die without God, this is what people experience every single day, sad to say. They wake up and they say, wow, those Christians were right all along. Some people have died hearing a street preacher like me or Brother Max or somebody else or Sister um, Michelle uh, or Pastor Kay or all the people that I do ministry with. Um, some of them have been featured on this channel. Uh, if you scroll on my channel, you will see them. Many people have died hearing us or other people across the world preaching the word of God to them, and they've died that same day. Some of them said to say not saying yes to Jesus. And they died laughing like they laugh at us, like they've laughed at us and laugh, have been laughing at us and have been ignoring us. Okay, at times we've been bringing the word and, and you say, hey, you want a Bible track? I told you about the Lord, whatever the case may be. We're talking about Christ preaching and they just walk by. I've seen people on numerous occasions when we preach the word of God, put their hands on their ears. I mean, put their hands on their ears. All right. If someone's outside cursing, rapping about mess, 
Do they put their hands on their ears? Absolutely not. They won't do that. But if you preach about God, they got to put their hands on their ears. It's the worst thing you could do is to talk about Jesus Christ. Put their hands on their ears. But when they enter into that place where they realize all of this stuff is true, they'll say to themselves, wow. Wow. I rejected Jesus. I rejected God. I laughed at the message. And now look at me now. Look at me now. I was warned over and over and over again. This is going to happen. I laughed. I laughed at it. And the Bible says those that, you know, that, that my God, God will laugh at, at, at your um destruction. Basically, the Bible says God's going to laugh at your downfall. You're going to say, help. And God's like, no, I'm not, I'm not coming to help you out because I tried to help you out, but you didn't want to listen. I gave you every single warning. You didn't want to hear. And now this is going to be your final end is your final destination. All right. Your real final destination, not the movies, your final destination. After, after hell, there's a place which is your true final destination, which is the lake of fire, the Bible says, where hell, we thrown into the lake of fire. All right. So from hell, you go into an awful lake of fire where there are demons still there to torment you. They, um, and also they're being tormented also. All right. So I just encourage you guys today, if you don't know him, well, you've seen the movie we played earlier, okay? If you haven't rewinded it. Um, you've seen the technology we, we, we just pulled up. This stuff is real. It's not me creating a fantasy or a lie to try to um, sway you to my side. It's the reality. It's the truth. As the name of the movie was called, it's reality. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and save you right now. If you're in sin, it's as easy as saying, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. Save me. I repent. Repent means you are going to turn around. Wash me in your blood. I pray, Lord Jesus, save me. I want to learn how to live a holy life. God loves me as a plan and destiny for your life. We're going to play this ad really quickly, guys, and we will be right back. What's going on, people? It's your boy, Brother Winston. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. I want to remind you guys that we are a live show. We go live four days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is New York City time, okay? Join the discussion. Hope to see you next show. All right. Also, if you want to advertise with us, all right, we have out of those four days a week, four times you can advertise. Okay. So that's basically what 16 times out of a month you could be advertising with just a hundred dollars a month. All right. We can create an ad for you. Okay. And put the information to your ad in the video description below this video. Okay. A great way to advertise, a very low entry price. All right. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. Let's get back to the video. And finally, guys, if you want to support this ministry, this is how you can do Cash App, um, Venmo, or PayPal. PayPal information should be in our video description below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. That's Brother Winston. Um, and, of course, subscribe. Follow us on Spotify. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. God bless. Peace.